This is probably in response to all the crazy tweets and discussions I've seen, which is like, oh no, we are becoming World of Warcraft. We have now decided to nerf bosses. Have you folks ever seen the nerf list for World of Warcraft? Yoshi P and team nerfs 1% of the boss health and everyone freaks out. Sepulchre of the first one, the latest raid tier. Not just one boss nerf, not just one boss change. Look at the amount of changes here and it goes across all the boss, multiple rounds of nerf, and this is what the World of Warcraft community has to deal with. When you look at a list like that, and then you come back to look at Yoshi P's 1% nerf, it really does put things into perspective though. I've been covering Final Fantasy XIV for over a year now, and I think this week is probably the most divided I've seen this community. In today's video, we're covering Yoshi P's statement that was just released today, giving more explanation on why did they nerf the P8S fight. The last time round, they nerfed a savage boss was all the way back in Heaven's Ward. And if you've been following the channel, you know there's a lot of drama and community discussion about it. He also goes on to elaborate why didn't they choose to tune the jobs as opposed to simply nerfing the boss outright. I'd like to cover Yoshi P's statement first and then I'd like to address the community discourse at the end of the video. Before we start, if you'd like the coverage on this channel, do subscribe to the channel, that will mean the world to me. So Yoshi P starts by saying he acknowledges there's a lot of discussion surrounding our explanation for nerfing the boss in P8S as well as the necessity of the adjustment itself. He apologized for the disruption caused by the balancing issue and for any offense resulting from the insufficient explanation we initially provided. And to translate that into layman terms, I'm sure he probably seen a lot of the posts that has been circulating on the internet, which is essentially Yoshi P and team telling people that their internal rate testers are so good that they overestimated the boss's health. And clearly that was not his intention and that's why he's clarifying in this statement here. He said in this post, he wants to clear up any misunderstanding as to how and why this adjustment was made. At this point in time, I think it's worth pointing out that Yoshi P could have just simply kept his silence. He's at TGS right now, about to go on live stream on a Sunday. He could have chose not to say anything, right? But the fact that he makes a second post to talk about the nerfs, I would think that most people wouldn't expect this from a MMORPG developer. It's a spicy topic for sure. I've never seen this comment section being so divided in over a year now. But reading on, he said the reason for the HP adjustment is due to a miscalculation on our part resulting in the boss's health being roughly 1% too high in compared to the previous difficulty of the last Savage boss. His team understand and appreciate that many of the players have basically done everything in their ability to basically maximize ability rotations, item levels, and repeated practice to try and beat the boss. And the reason why they nerfed the boss is that with the initial health pool pre-nerf, there were certain undesirable consequences, including certain jobs being excluded from party recruitments. And I'm sure you guys have seen it in party finders, no machinists allowed, no paladins allowed. In the comment section, you guys also flag a lot of other jobs that need help, like raid mages, etc. And his team recognizes that this is not something they want to promote. Another issue of leaving the boss as it was is that there's a growing dissatisfaction with overly punishing degree of difficulty. I guess this is more like frustrations of running into not being able to clear unless people switch job compositions within the static itself. And again, he reiterates that it was his team's miscalculation that was the root cause of this issue. And he thought the best way is to correct it by explaining the mistake and correcting the inflated HP value. This type of correction has little precedence in Final Fantasy XIV's development, although the decision was made after considerable debate. And again, they apologize for the impact on player enjoyment. This is probably in response to all the crazy tweets and discussions I've seen, which is like, oh no, we are becoming World of Warcraft. We have now decided to nerf bosses. Have you folks ever seen the nerf list for World of Warcraft? Yoshi P and team nerfs 1% of the boss health and everyone freaks out. Let me show you what you have to deal with in World of Warcraft where I came from. Sepulchre of the first one, the latest raid tier. Not just one boss nerf, not just one boss change. Look at the amount of changes here and it goes across all the boss, multiple rounds of nerf, and this is what the World of Warcraft community has to deal with. You can read it on your own. I can put the links in the comments below. But my point is, look at all these dates of nerf announcements for the latest tier. When you look at a list like that, and then you come back to look at Yoshi P's 1% nerf, it really does put things into perspective though. At this point in time, it's still worth saying that was this tier ideal in terms of rollout? No, I think everyone can recognize that this tier wasn't ideal. We had the P7S way marker drama, which I've never seen the comment section so divided upon. And I do think there's good arguments on both sides of the house. In fact, not just both sides of the house. There were many houses arguing different points of view. And I read all of your comments, and I do think there's merit in most of the arguments. Point is, could Yoshi P and team have done better? I think they would have recognized they could have done better too. 
be it whether it's the P7S way markers, be it whether it's the P8S boss tuning, I'm sure they recognize they could have done better. The very fact he had to make this post probably supports my argument. But I must say, I probably lost quite a bit of brain cells reading all the comments about, oh no, we have become World of Warcraft. Oh no, rate tuning is not perfect. Coming from World of Warcraft, I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, moving on to Yoshi P statements. Source of the miscalculation. This issue was touched upon in the patch notes, but allow me to explain our balancing process in further detail. Firstly, the development team bases adjustments on the following premise. The top percentage of players are overwhelming better at the game than we are. Meaning they make the assumption that the race to world first raiders in the Final Fantasy XIV community are better raiders than their internal testing team. We regret not stating this more clearly in the previous explanation, but set premise is the reason why we do not release content tuned precisely as it was when the battle team's balance testers cleared it. We always add a little bit extra to the boss values before rechecking the fight and releasing it live. To compensate for their perceived skill difference, of the race to world first raiders in the broader Final Fantasy XIV community versus that of the internal testers. But I guess another way of reading this statement is to say their internal testers are pretty much as good as the race to world first raiders. Maybe they should stream as well. I would probably watch that. The team responsible for balancing boss fights does so without debug commands and at the appropriate item levels, employing available material, food and medicines while experimenting with mitigating actions and various job compositions. So they don't have some additional advantage over the broader player base. Yet we recognize that player skill far exceeds our own. If we were to ship content with the same values which challenge our battle team, the top raiders would be deprived of that by the skin of your thief victory in the initial week of release. Based on the team skill and our experience that little bit extra usually translates into, balance test clear values plus 1 or 2% health. This is what they have done historically. So I think he's trying to make a point that based on their previous benchmark, it has always worked. But this time around is probably an anomaly. I will guess the fight design also plays a factor in terms of how much additional health they should add. But this was always their guiding principles internally. He then goes on to say the final values account for other mathematical factors too, of course, such as the estimated damage the party could deal from the moment of victory to the end of time limit, as well as the total burst damage potential based on frequency and amount inflicted. The numbers these various calculations are based on what we were referencing when we said that our team's performance was higher than anticipated. The latest installment featured a boss closely tied to the dark past of a major character, and we were focused on making this battle even more of a challenge than usual, which I think is a fair point. Wouldn't spoil who they're referencing, but if you did Abyss Souls, you would know exactly who this person is. And this person played a key role in the Final Fantasy XIV story. I do see the merits of this point. How lame would it be if this character that you have seen forever in the Final Fantasy XIV universe simply just rolled over and became a loot piñata? Probably cheapens the victory a little, don't you think? As such, the battle team spent an inordinate amount of time together designing and testing the fight mechanics, which in turn led to them improving party coordination and communication beyond what they might usually achieve for a given boss fight. Final adjustments were however still based on the team's victory data, and so the little bit extra we added for the release proved to be a little bit too much. So I think he also recognizes that their internal team spent an additional amount of time versus the previous benchmarks, and those resulted in better synergies, communication, chemistry among the team, and that resulted in a higher than average performance from them, I guess. Reasons aside, our adjustments were off by the crucial 1%, and again, we apologize to those whose gaming experiences were adversely affected by the correction and insufficient explanation. He goes on to say, a high difficulty rate is a special kind of battle, we want players to enjoy a satisfying, hard-won victory, and we keep that ideal in mind when making tweaks and balance adjustments. Although we failed to walk the delicate line this time, the experience will help us design a more perfectly thrilling battle in the future. So that's the explanation on why they decide to nerf the boss. Again, it's the first time since Heaven's Ward they decided to do this. But then there was a bigger discourse in the community when they first read the initial post. There were people unhappy on both sides of the camp. People who already cleared the fight pre-nerf would say, ah, you see, Yoshi P and team cheapening the victory again, nerfing the fight. Why couldn't they let the fight be difficult and let people work towards the clear? And then you have people on the other side of the fence saying that, oh no, Yoshi P and team didn't tune the boss properly and therefore we are forced to play certain jobs or my job is not relevant in PF. So as you can see, in either scenario, to move or do not move, rock and a hard place. Yoshi P in the middle. But hopefully this explanation clears up some misunderstandings. The next topic in his post is regarding job balancing because there was also another camp of people saying, why did you decide to nerf the boss? Why couldn't you just do job balancing properly so we don't have to nerf the boss? so that all jobs are viable. Here's Yoshi P's explanation. When balancing jobs, each job's base damage numbers at the applicable item level 
are adjusted with respect to the difficulty of playing the particular job and its rotation, as well as its support actions and their effects. Naturally, the above factors are also affected by the mechanics and combination thereof at work in each battle, meaning that every job's numbers will not necessarily be at ideal values during all available battles. In addition to this inherent variance, there are indeed times where our calculations or adjustments are incorrect, producing damage numbers lower than intended, and requiring subsequent strengthening of a job. So I guess what he's saying is that it's not as simple as I'm taking a spreadsheet and saying, all right, I'll buff X, Y, and Z by 1%, 2%, 3% respectively, this should sum up to X% percent buff. It doesn't work that way because depending on the boss mechanics, the uptime of the job, the mechanics that you have to deal with, there will be variance in terms of the impact of those buffs and nerfs to the jobs. Again, in an ideal world, I'm sure his team recognizes that the jobs weren't exactly balanced. I mean, just look at the machinist mains, right? They've been talking about this forever. So I don't think he's making an excuse. He's simply saying that it's not as simple as adding plus percent, minus percent to each of the abilities, and then it works for the fight. He goes on to say, in this case, when considering job balance more broadly, the jobs that needed emergency adjustments in this fashion were paladin and warrior. But he recognizes that a lot of tank mains were paladin and basically warriors swapping to gunbreakers to get the clear. However, the aforementioned issue with Abyssos the 8 Circle Savage also caused certain jobs to be better suited to the raid than others and made the damage check required to clear extremely strict, resulting in a situation where players felt obligated to choose jobs with higher damage output when attempting the raid. And keep in mind, he does apologize in this notice, so, so he's fully aware that they made a mistake here in terms of job tuning. I guess he's simply explaining why they made a mistake in terms of job balancing here. Attempting to fix the issue by buffing certain jobs without making changes to the rate itself would have negatively impacted overall balance within each role and likely resulted in disappointment for those whose jobs were already dealing sufficient damage for the rate and therefore receive no adjustments. Unfortunately, adjusting all jobs in such a short period of time is also not feasible. So essentially, he's saying within a short time frame, if they were to rush to make job balancing, it would result in overall a higher dissatisfaction amongst the player base who main different types of jobs. Because well, other jobs got buffs and they didn't get buffs. But I think the more crucial point is that it's a short time frame. If they were to rush the job balancing changes, they might make an even worse mistake. They might over buff certain jobs. Meaning, if they were to rebalance the jobs, they essentially don't want to make a mistake simply because they were put under time pressure. He goes on to say, the root cause of the issue was a mistake in balancing the duty, and therefore an immediate fix that maintains role balance was required. He goes on to say, it is a game design fundamental as well as a policy that rather than adjust the jobs to suit each battle, we balance the jobs independently and only then set the battle content difficulty. Changing job balance for one single duty would end up causing more problems than it solves. And so we decided to address the problem in the manner we did, by ameliorating the root cause. I appreciate that regardless of our rationale, this issue has been a source of frustration for many and I apologize for that. And I think everyone can agree this has been a very dramatic week for the Final Fantasy XIV community. Way marks in P7S, job tuning, boss nerfs. And I think Yoshi P also recognizes that whatever he does, there's no way he can please everyone. So he basically has to pick out of all the options on the table, which is the least of all evils. And some people might not like the decisions, but it is what it is. But the key takeaway in this lodestone post is this. They recognize they messed up. And well, they apologized for it. Not once, not twice, thrice at least. And just to bring up my point again, in World of Warcraft, I've seen many nerfs, but I've never seen a single time where the game developer comes out to apologize and explain for all these nerfs that you guys are seeing on screen, and I am aware that the scroller is still scrolling because it is a wall of text. And I've seen comments with such venom in the comment section below, on Twitter, on Reddit, basically saying that, oh, the sky is crumbling down because they messed up on their job balancing. And I've seen such venom in comments in the sections below, personally attacking Yoshipi and team for the decisions that were made in the past week, banning the first person who basically came up with the illegal way marks, choosing to nerf the boss by 1%. Did Yoshipi and team mess up? Yes, they did. Hence the apologies. Are they deserving of being called names? I don't think so. Because folks, what happens when game developers lose their passion for what they're doing? This is what happens. Nerf after nerfs on various days, on various bosses, and you tell me, do you prefer the 1% boss health nerf or do you prefer playing and raiding in a world where all these bosses get nerfed week after week and nobody know what the hell is going on? 
In conclusion to Yoshi P's statement, the eight circle was never intended to be a nerf, but merely the correction of values that were set inappropriately for the fourth stage savage rate to begin with. Nevertheless, I understand it feels like a nerf for those who worked hard and were on the verge of clearing the fight, and I regret having caused such disappointment. We strongly wish you continue to enjoy fiercely challenging savage fights, particularly in the early days after release, and we will do our utmost to further improve the tuning of these battles. He's not making excuses, he knows they messed up here. Further, we will strive to better understand what our players think about such issues and improve our operational protocols, perhaps by waiting a week before implementing fixes in addition to providing details on our perspective, so that if we find ourselves in a similar situation, we arrive at a solution that is more satisfying to everyone. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, I sincerely apologize for any disruption that our error may have caused to your gameplay experience, and we appreciate your patience. Naoki Yoshida, Final Fantasy XIV producer and director. So there you have it folks, words from the man himself. And I do know, even after he puts out this statement, there will still be hatred towards the Final Fantasy XIV team. And all I'll leave you with is this, we got a 1% nerf to a boss. For the first time since Heaven's Ward, a boss has been nerfed in Final Fantasy XIV. Heaven's Ward was launched in 2015, in Shadowlands, the latest tier. While Final Fantasy XIV are freaking out over one line of nerfs, these are the nerfs we are getting in World of Warcraft, the closest competitor in the next raiding MMORPG that you can potentially play. It goes on and on and across various dates. And now, I guess you tell me, what is the best thing for the community to do? Should we accept Yoshi P's apology and move on? Or should we continue to complain about how the sky is falling down because Yoshi P and team nerfed the boss by 1%? Because while the grass might always seem greener on the other side, I came from the other side. And let me tell you, the grass is not green there. The grass is dead over there versus what we have here. Those are my closing thoughts. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below, whether you're for or against what Yoshi P is saying. I still promise to read every single comment. That said, if you like my coverage of FF14 on this channel, do subscribe to the channel. That would mean the world to me. I stream on Twitch on a weekly basis. Feel free to swing by to say hello. Lastly, big thank you to my Patreon subscribers. Thanks for keeping the channels alive. Great weekend, folks. I will see you soon.